Hi, this is Keith Graves. Um, in these weird times, this is the way we're going to have to get together, I guess. And uh, so we're going to try to have as much fun as possible and pretend that we're doing this the normal way, even though we're not. So I will, uh, you know, we're going to have, I'm going to read some stories to you and uh, we're going to play a drawing game together. And then we'll have a little chat at the end where I pretend that you're asking me questions that maybe you would want to know about. And, uh, and I'll answer those. But um, so I'm Keith Graves. I'm an author and illustrator. Uh, I've written and illustrated a lot of books. It's being an author. And of course, you guys know, right? Being an author means that I write the words in the book. And being an illustrator means that you get to draw the pictures as well. So lucky me, I get to do both. It's the most fun job in the world. I, I'm, it's a great job for me. I have a lot of fun when I go to work every day. And uh, it's been a very rewarding job. I, I, I couldn't ask for a better, better uh, job to do every day. But um, anyway, so I guess what you see on your screen is me as a little kid, little, little peanut head on, uh, on a little tiny pony. Um, kids used to ask when I would uh, come to schools um, what I was like when I was little. So I asked my mom to send some pictures of me when I was little. So this is the the coolest one. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what that picture was all about. I didn't have that. I didn't have a horse. So I guess it was just the photographer's horse. But uh, I was very happy there. Okay, and here's another shot my mom sent to me. It was really funny. I was playing harmonica in my grandma's kitchen. So anyway, I, I used to be little. That's the main point here. Uh, here's some pictures from some of my books. Um, some of you who are into art may be interested uh, to know that uh, I I like to paint with acrylic paint, and that's how most of my books were created. Um, although sometimes I draw pictures with a pencil and then use my computer to fill in the cover color, like with uh, in my book um, Second Banana and Chicken Big and Puppy. Um, but anyway, we're going to start off with a story, and uh, this one's called The Monsterator. Okay, so this is a Halloween story. Let's go with this one. Master Edgar Dreadberry found Halloween a bore. Yawn. The whole business of costumes was a miserable chore. Should he dress as a pirate? Arr. A ghost? Boo. A mummy? Mm. A zombie, erg. A clown, honk. A ventriloquist dummy? Oh. They're all equally crummy. I wish I could be something screamingly scary, something fanged and foul and horribly hairy. So instead of his customary costume store, Edgar visited a shop he'd never noticed before. It's called the Monster Shop. The Emporium was dim and dark as a cell. Service, he called, and banged on the bell. Ding! No one was there. I will help myself. But Edgar found no costumes or masks on the shelf. Hmm, he huffed. I've wasted my time. Then, he noticed a contraption all covered with grime. Monsterator, he read, insert one dime. Edgar's eyebrow arched. He grumbled, oh, why not? He climbed inside and dropped a coin in the slot. Then the monsterator rumbled and hissed and clanged. The monsterator flashed and clattered and banged. The transformation began as the engine noise rose. Edgar was monsterated from his knees to his nose and monsterated some more from his teeth to his toes. When the machine finally quit, Edgar crashed through the door. He banged on his chest with his fists and roared, roar. The sight of him frightened a gaggle of girls. Eek! 
and startled a family of squeamish squirrels. Eek! He horrified the tall. Eek! He terrified the small. Eek! Edgar Dreadbury frightened them all. He howled with laughter. What fiendish fun! I wish Halloween would never be done. But soon it was. Edgar was alone. There was no one left to scare. Everyone had gone home. Edgar yawned. Bah! He said, I've had enough monstering. I'm ready for bed. I'll return to the monsterator and put it in reverse. I'll turn back into me and we'll look none the worse. But the shop was gone. It had vanished somehow. Drat, he spat. What shall I do now? Edgar stomped home by way of the wood. He growled, I suppose I'm a monster for good. At first, the butler and maid were aghast, but their fears of being eaten by Edgar soon passed. Edgar grew fond of his freakish new features. He relished his role as a monstrous creature. Grrr, eek! Especially each fall when the trees dropped their leaves and darkness fell on All Hallows' Eve. Now tykes tiptoe as they trick and they treat near the Dreadbury house at the end of the street, for there beside the bubbling bog lurks a monsterated creature obscured by the fog. Though some may mistake it for a vampire bat, or a werewolf, a witch, or a large mutant rat, those things pale when compared with the sight of Master Edgar Dreadbury on Halloween night. Grr. The end. So I wanted to do something really fun with the Monsterator that uh, I haven't done with any of my other books. But uh, I came up with this idea that at the end of the book, I would uh, create a way for you guys to Monsterate Edgar Dreadberry yourself. So what I did is I put Edgar on one side of the page, and then I created five different monsters for the next few pages, and we sliced the pages in the books so that when you fold them over Edgar, they fit perfectly, and you can mix and match and create a lot of different kinds of monsters. You see how it works like that? You fold over the pages and you do that. Anyway, I'll show you how it works. So, you could, uh, there were five different monsters that I created to monster Edgar with. And the first one is Buggy and Frankelina, Robbie, Lizzie, and my Uncle Ned. So you could monster Edgar like this, or this, or this, or this. Or this, oh, here's one, I like that one. Or you could do this, or this, or maybe this, how about that one? So believe it or not, there are 625 different combos you could do there. So you can have a lot of fun monstrating Edgar yourself at the end of the uh, story there. So that's the monstrator, now, I'd like to read you a different kind of book altogether. This is one of my uh, favorite books to read. It's called Chicken Big. And if we were together in the same place, I would ask all of you guys to do sound effects for me for this story. And we can do them. I just won't hear you do them. So I'm going to tell you what to do and you can make the sound effects at home. So what I need you to do is whenever I point like this, if you can see me on the screen here, just whenever I point, that means that I need you guys to make the sound of very frightened chickens, like, bark, 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 bark. you know, flap your wings. And uh, I've got a, actually some sound here of what it might sound like if you do that. So, All right, so there's a frightened chicken sound, okay? 
So when I point, you guys make the frightened chicken sounds, okay? So the story begins with the four not very bright chickens trying to decide what the title of the book should be. What should we call this book, says the rooster. How about chicken kind of large? Or uh, chicken tall? No, 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 chicken salad. Wait, I'm having a brainstorm. Let's call it chicken big. That's it. On a teeny little farm in an itty bitty coop, a very small hen laid a big, humongous egg. Bonk. The egg began to shake. The egg began to quake. Out popped a big, humongous chick. What is it? crowed the little rooster. It's big, clucked the small chicken. It's enormous, clucked the smaller chicken. It's an elephant, peeped the smallest chicken. She was not the sharpest beak in flock. He's too big to stay in our itty bitty coop, crowed the rooster. Much, much too big, clucked the small chicken. He'll break the floor, clucked the smaller chicken. Indoor elephants are dangerous, squawked the smallest chicken. I don't feel like an elephant, thought the big chick. I wish I were a chicken. No elephants allowed. The next day, an acorn fell and conked the smallest chicken on the head. The sky is falling, she peeked. Run for your lives. So the chickens ran for their lives. Anyway, so that's supposed to be the, uh, uh oh. There it is. So I pointed, you made the, if you guys can cut that part there, that'd be great. Um, Samantha, can you hear me? Yes. I'm gonna back up and, and uh, hit that moment one more time. Sounds good. I didn't have the, uh, Thank you up properly, I guess. No the next day, an acorn, can I start now, is that okay? You can start now. The next day, an acorn fell and conked the smallest chicken on the head. The sky is falling, she peeped. Run for your lives. So the chickens ran for their lives. <laughs> Don't worry, said the big humongous chick. It's only an acorn. They're actually quite tasty. I don't think elephants eat acorns, said the little rooster. I heard they only eat popcorn, clucked the small chicken. Maybe he's not an elephant, clucked the smaller chicken. The smallest chicken looked closely at the big humongous chick. Ah, my mistake, she peeped. He must be a squirrel. A squirrel, thought the big humongous chick. Later on, the smallest chicken was pecking for worms when a raindrop splattered on top of her head. The sky is leaking, she peeped. We'll all drown. Run for your lives. And the chickens ran for their lives again. <laughs> Relax, said the big humongous chick. It's only rain. Come stand under my wings and you will stay dry. I've never seen a squirrel do that, crowed the little rooster. Not very squirrelish at all, clucked the small chicken. Squirrels don't keep you dry in the rain, clucked the smaller chicken. I see what you're saying, peeped the smallest chicken. Apparently, he is an umbrella. These are not bright chickens, thought the big chick. After a while, a chilly wind began to blow. Someone has put the world in the refrigerator, peeped the smallest chicken. We're all going to freeze. Run for your lives. But they didn't get far. Don't panic, said the big humongous chick. It's only the north wind. Stand behind me and I will protect you. The chickens all felt much better. 
An umbrella would have turned inside out in this wind, crowed the little rooster. He's not inside out as far as I can tell, clucked the small chicken. I'm all warm and comfy now, clucked the smaller chicken. Only one thing makes me feel this way, peeped the smallest chicken. Plainly, this fellow is a sweater. This is getting ridiculous, thought the big humongous chick. At nap time, the little chickens returned to the coop and found all their eggs were gone. We've been robbed, crowed the little rooster. By an egg burglar, clucked the small chicken. Woe is me, clucked the smaller chicken. Woe is me too, peeped the smallest chicken. The chickens all began to boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. But the big humongous chick saw a sneaky red fox carrying the eggs into his den a mile away. Oh, no, you don't. With three giant hop, hop, hops, the big humongous chick caught up to the fox just as he was about to make himself a scrambled egg supper. Yikes, said the fox, a hippopotamus. I don't think so, said the big humongous chick, but you are a naughty thief. The frightened fox ran away with his tail between his legs, having lost all interest in poultry. In no time, the big chick was stomping back to the coop with the missing eggs. Our babies, cried the happy little chickens. Our hero, they all clucked. Yay! Fuck. I knew it all along, crowed the little rooster. He's no elephant. He's definitely not a squirrel, clucked the small chicken. He's surely no umbrella, clucked the smaller chicken. He couldn't be a sweater peeped the smallest chicken. Only one thing could be so smart, so kind, so warm, and so brave. Clearly, he's a cow. No, shouted the others, he's a chicken. Chicken. The big humongous chick was thrilled to find out that he was a chicken after all. Oh, thank goodness, he said. Now I can move back into the coop. Uh, actually, it's a rather small coop, croaked the little rooster. It's itty bitty, clucked the small chicken. Teensy weensy, clucked the smaller chicken. But we'll make room, peeped the smallest chicken. He still sounds like an elephant. The end. All right, so that's it for Chicken Big. Um, I'd like to read one more quick story. This was my very first book uh, that I wrote and illustrated a long time ago. It's called Frank Was a Monster Who Wanted to Dance. And after we do this, we're gonna draw. And uh, so I would advise you guys um, to get two pieces of paper and something to draw with um, as soon as I finish this story. And then we will uh, play a drawing game together. And that's gonna be the most fun of all. Okay, here we go. This is called Frank Was a Monster Who Wanted to Dance. Frank was a monster who wanted to dance. He said, I know I could boogie if they gave me a chance. Meow. So he put on his hat and his shoes made in France and opened a jar and put ants in his pants. He drove to the theater, yahoo, and jumped on stage. Then he danced like his shoe size instead of his age. Frank shook his shoulders and strutted his stuff. The audience screamed. He couldn't get enough. Bravo, fab, wow, buffo, check this out. Frank did a cartwheel, yippee. Frank did a flip, yow when suddenly his head began to unzip. Uh-oh. Out flopped his brain, which plopped on the floor. Eek, yuck, eek. Which loosened his eyeball. Which rolled out the door. Meow. And after his arm fell out of his sleeve, oops. 
The horrified audience started to leave. Yikes, run, boo. But Frank kept dancing. He said, what the heck? And laughed as his head fell off of his neck. He said to himself with a one-eyed glance, I might be a monster, but man, can I dance. The end. Okay, so now if you guys will go and get your paper and pencil, we will have some fun playing a drawing game together. Okay, guys, so if you've got your pencil and paper ready now, um, we're going to play this drawing game. And this is a game I used to play with my kids when they were little. Um, I have twins, and they're uh, both in college now. But when they were little, we used to draw a lot together. Um, and we played this game. So the way it goes is I, I need you, if we were together in a room, I would have you guys get, help me out with this game. Um, and we would, you would suggest ideas to me, and uh, that's how we'd play the game. But I'll tell you how we're going to do it instead. Okay, so the way, the way the game goes is I would ask you guys to think of a farm animal, and I would call on you, and you would tell me what farm animal, animal you're thinking of. And I would write it down on the page, and then I would ask somebody else for a zoo animal, and then somebody for a pet type of animal, and I'd write all, the, all three names down, and then I would have to draw a character that combines all three animals into one creature. And then we would all do it ourselves. We would come up with three new creatures and everybody would do it, right? Um, so we're gonna do that anyway. We're gonna do that in a, in a new way here since we can't be in the same room. So what I've done here is I've got these little bowls and I created, I put some uh, papers inside with different types of animals written on the papers. So what I'm gonna do is randomly pick in this case, a farm animal, right? I'm gonna pick this one, and it says cow, okay? So I'm gonna write cow on top of my page here, cow. Okay, now I've got a little bowl that says zoo, all right? This is zoo animals in here, so I'm gonna reach in here and find a paper and see what it says. Here we go, this one, oh, this one says gorilla. <laughs> okay, I'm going to write gorilla on my page here as well. You guys are just watching at this point, all right? We're going to do one together in a minute, but uh, you're just going to watch me do this one, and, and, uh, and you'll see how to play the game. Okay, and then I'm going to pick a third animal out of the pet bowl and see what do we get here. Oh, hamster. Okay, hamster there. Okay, so I'm going to write that down, hamster. Hopefully you guys can see all that. Cow, gorilla, hamster. All right, so now I have to combine a cow, a gorilla, and a hamster into one animal. Okay, so you guys just watch me do this one, and then we'll pick three new animals, and we'll all do it together, okay? Okay, so cow, gorilla, hamster. Here's how we do it. Let's see here. Hmm, this is a tricky one. Cow, gorilla, hamster. Hmm, how are we going to do this? Let's see, I can do, ooh, I think, yes, here we go. We got it figured out. All right, get the glasses on here.
All right, guys, so there's our cow gorilla hamster. So if you notice what I did, I drew a cow's face, right? This big nose and some horns and cow ears and he's eating uh, some flowers. And then I drew a gorilla's body with his sort of big arms and uh, that weird forehead that they have. And then there's uh, the back end is the tiny little hamster and making his tail wiggle a little bit. And um, so that's it. So you combine, so the only rules to the game are is you have to put something from each animal in your drawing. Okay, so I know you guys have it now. You're ready to draw with me. You've got your pencil and paper. So now we're gonna pick three new animals and you guys will draw with me, okay? And you don't have to copy what I do. You can come up with your own if you want. Um, or if you can't think of anything, you can draw what I'm drawing. So up to you. The only rule is you have to have something from each animal in your drawing. Okay, so let's start again. So, so we'll start off by picking a farm animal. What do you think? Let's see. How about this one? What do we have? A pig. All right, that one says pig. So I'll write pig. Let's erase this first. Okay, so now I'm gonna write pig for the new drawing here. Okay, what are we doing here? All right, come on you. Nope, not that one. All right, pig, got it, okay. And now we're gonna pick a zoo type of animal, which I have in my little bowl here. All right, what's, what is this gonna be? This is, ooh, good one, elephant. Okay, we have pig, we have elephant. So everybody write elephant on your page. I spell that right? Elephant, yes. Okay, now one more. We're gonna pick a pet type of animal. What would this be? Oh, this one is, oh, that's not the one, that's farm. Pet, there's pet, okay. Let's get a pet type of animal here. What do you think? Ooh, a parrot. All right, this is gonna be an interesting creature. A pig, an elephant, and a parrot. You guys ready to do this? I know you are, you know how, I, you know how it's done now. You just have to have something from a pig, something from an elephant, and something from a parrot, all in one creature, okay? Okay, on your mark, let's get those pencils ready to go. All right, loosen up the old brain a little bit. All right, ready, set, go. Pig, elephant, parrot. Here we go. Let's see how you do this.
All right, there's my pig elephant parrot. Okay, so I did sort of an elephant's face and elephant's ears and uh, sort of a parrot's uh, uh, feathery neck there and some, and some wings and then the pig's body with the curly tail and everything. And I had him standing on one of those things that parrots sit on when they're in the cage and they kind of swing back and forth. Um, so I'd be curious to see what your pictures look like. This is like my favorite part of the whole presentation is usually when I get to see what you guys draw. So I hope you're drawing something cool. Uh, I bet you are. And, um, and now that you've gotten the hang of it, I think we could do one more and um, it might be a lot of fun. And this time we'll take it one step further. We're, we'll not only do three different animals and you combine them into one animal, but this time you guys also come up, combine all three names of the animals to come up with an interesting new name for your animal, okay? So we'll do that. Okay, everybody ready to give this a shot? We'll do this one more time. Let's see. Let's go here. Drawing. All righty. Okay. So let's go back to our bowls here that I have here. I have, okay, here's a zoo animal. Let's pick one. What do I have here? Ooh, I have a hippo. Okay. Everybody write hippo on top of your page. All right, now we're gonna come up with, now we're gonna pick a, uh, a farm animal. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, how about rabbit? Okay, I have a rabbit. So let's write rabbit on the page. We don't forget what we're doing. Okay, and now we're gonna pick a pet. And what I have here is a cat. Okay, cat. Everybody write cat on your page as well. Okay, are we ready to go? You guys are experts now. We're gonna draw something crazy here. We're gonna do a hippo, rabbit, cat. It's never been done in the history of humanity before. Hippo, rabbit, cat. Everybody ready to draw? And remember when you're done, combine the name hippo, the name rabbit, and the name cat into one name. Okay, all right, here we go. Hippo, rabbit, cat, I'm very excited about this. Glasses on. All righty, hippo, rabbit, Hat. Yeah. Now let me just say all good art begins with noses. I mean, it's just, I think it's, I think Picasso was the one who decided that a long time ago. Um, nostrils, very important also. This is cool. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Okay. Hippo. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. It's modeled after my cat, Violet. There's a lot of fur. Big old giant tail. And she likes to scratch me. But I least expect it. All right, I think that's it. This animal lives in the mountainous regions somewhere. All right, there's my hippo, rabbit, 
cat. There should be some water in the river right here. All right, here we go. I hope you guys came up with something cool for that one. And the name, Hippo Rabbit Cat, what would I come up with here? Let's see, how about a, uh, uh, I've got something elaborate here. How about this? Rippo Habitat. <laughs> okay, you guys probably came up with something better for that. Um, okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed doing this. Um, now, if we were all together, you know, somewhere in here, I would say, you know, why don't we talk? and uh, you know, have a conversation and you guys could uh, ask me questions or tell me stuff, um, whatever, whatever you like. Um, but since you're not here, I have put together a bowl full of questions that are the kind of questions that uh, students usually wanna know. And I'll just pick some randomly out of my question bowl. It's not press anymore, it's questions. So here's my question bowl. And I'll just pretend you guys are asking me these questions and I'll try to answer as best I can. And hopefully this will uh, answer some of the questions you may have asked if we were together. All right, this one is a pretty common question. How long does it take to create a book? Well, that's a great question. And the, the answer is it could take, it takes at least a few months just because of the stuff they have to do to actually make a book. Like, uh, let me show you. Now here's one of my books. This is Three Nasty Gnarlies, but it's in Korean. Uh, anyway, so, but you can get the idea. So I have to, when, when I write a book, um, you know, I write all the words and, and the story, and that part could take as long, you know, it could take years. It took, or it might take, you know, a, a week. So it depends on how quickly I'm able to come up with the story. But let's say I, it takes me, you know, a, a, a few weeks to come up with the story. And then I have to come up, I have to do the pictures to go with the story, you know? So I do these paintings of the pictures that are gonna go in the book. And I do all those here in my art studio and, uh, you know, with my paints and my, my pencils and stuff. And, um, and when I get all that done, I have to ship off the whole package to the publisher, the company that makes, makes the book. And it takes them a while to make copies of all my artwork and, uh, and to put the writing on the page with the artwork and to make copies of all that and then bind it all together and in, into a book, you know, like, I don't know if you know this, but, uh, and people ask this a lot too, like how are books made? How do you actually get a book to be a book? And you know, these, these pages, believe it or not, are, are stitched together like sewing and, uh, surprising and you know like a book cover the only difference between the cover and pages inside like this is just a copy this is a something off a, like a, a big copy machine and they make a copy of my artwork and then they take this same sort of page where it's just a piece of paper and they glue it onto a uh, piece of hard card cardboard uh, to make the cover nice and hard like that so it protects the inside pages so that's how they make the book and it takes a few months for the publishers to do this. Um, and so all together, you know, when I uh, create a book and I do all the pictures and the writing and I send it in, from the time I start until the time it finally shows up on, um, you know, bookstores, shelves and libraries and stuff, um, it's, it's about a year, you know, it seems to be about typical for me. I mean, sometimes they're faster and slower depending on the situation, but uh, I, I'd say a good, good guess, you know, for, Average is about a year, maybe six months to a year, something like that. So kind of takes a while, you know, to make a book. So let's see, what is an, another question here? Yes, uh, what do you do first? Do you do the writing or the drawing first? Um, well, for me, it depends on, um, it depends on how the idea comes. If I, um, sometimes I have an idea 
that's just sort of an, uh, uh, an idea that, that uh, is easier to describe in words. And then I'll write the idea down in words and I might write the story first. And uh, sometimes I come up with the picture first and I write the story around the picture. So for instance, in my, um, in my book, Frank was a monster who wanted to dance. This started with me uh, drawing a picture of Frank in my notebook and then creating a story around that character. And I tried to think of what would be the funniest thing for this monster to do. And I thought it, maybe he could go dancing and fall apart. So that was, uh, that started with a picture first. Um, then on the other hand, um, I have, um, let's see, I have this book, it's called Pet Boy. And this is about, Pet Boy is about uh, a boy, Stanley, who collects pets. And um, he, uh, he's, he's not the best pet owner in the world. He, he neglects his pets a little bit. And he gets more excited about the collecting of the pets and all the different exotic pets he can, he can get rather than paying a lot of attention to each one of them and giving them the attention and love and, and playing with them that they need. And so one day Stanley gets um, taken away in a spaceship and he becomes a pet of an alien boy. And now Stanley is a pet, but the alien boy who has Stanley as a pet is a very, very loving, caring, nice pet owner. And Stanley le learns to uh, realizes that he's not uh, being as good to his pets as he should. And when he goes home, he, um, he makes it all up to them. And, uh, and that's, this, that's how this story goes. And it, this began with the story. So I wrote out the entire story before I did any pictures. And uh, so I had no idea what everything would look like until you know somewhere down the line. So it goes different ways. Um, let's see, how can you draw so fast? Everybody always asks this, how do you draw so fast? Well, look at me, see, see how old I am? And I've been drawing every day for so long, centuries, you know? And I, so I've got a lot of practice. So think of it like playing the piano or something. You know, everybody can sit down at the piano and go ding, 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 but it doesn't sound like piano playing. But if you practice a lot, then it, it becomes easy and you, you can really make beautiful music. Um, so uh, the way I do it so fast is I get a lot of practice, you know. Um, let's see, what is this here now? Yeah, okay, this is the biggie. This is the one that everybody always asks at every single presentation. Where do you get your ideas? So I'll show you where I get the ideas. Let's see, where, where is that book? Where is it? I have lots of these little notebooks lying around. You can get them at the art supply store or different kinds of stores. And in these books, you know, every time I have an idea, I don't know if you can see any of that, but um, anyway, every time I have an idea, like I'm lying in bed, I'm you know, about to go to sleep and an idea pops into my head and I think, oh, that'd be a good idea for a book or a painting or something. And I get out my little book, which I keep next to me and all as close to me as, as possible all the time. And I put the, I draw the idea or write it down in my little book. And then I, you know, go to sleep and next day, maybe at some point I have another idea and I, you know, draw that in the book. Well, pretty soon I've got the whole book is full of ideas that I've had, right? And everybody has ideas. You have ideas, your parents have ideas. Um, the whole thing is you just don't let go of them, put them down somewhere so you don't lose them because you'll forget them. You know, you'll remember some of them, but a lot of them you'll just forget. You know, you just forget the idea. It was a great idea, and it just like flies out of your brain and you can't ever get it back again. So what I do is I try to put as many of them as I can down in these little books, and then pretty soon I've got not only this book full of ideas, but others. You know, I've got a stack of them. So now if I'm ever stuck for an idea or if I just want to see what I'm going to do next, I'll go and look through my little notebooks and find something cool. That's what happened with Chicken Big. I found I had a drawing. I came up with an idea one day to do um, a story called Chicken Big. And I didn't know what the story was going to be, but I drew a big chicken in my notebook and a little teeny weeny cow and a little teeny farm. And I wrote Chicken Big at the top. And it sat in my notebook for a couple of years, maybe longer than that. And then one day I was flipping through my notebooks looking for an idea. And I saw a Chicken Big and I thought, that's great. I'll do a book called Chicken. I've wanted to do this for a while. 
And so then I finally came up with a story called Chicken Baby. And that's how it worked. So that's where my ideas come from. I don't know about anybody else. But um, so that's it. Um, I hope you guys have had fun. Uh, I don't want to go on too long with yakking, but uh, I, I advise you in this weird time that we're in to uh, take advantage of books. You know, best thing in the world to me are books. I love to read. And, um, you know, reading is what made me want to, to, to become a writer and, and an illustrator. And um, so I hope you guys love books and I hope you take advantage of them and read to each other, read to yourself, um, read to your little brother, read to your mom, <laughs> have her read to you, your dad. Um, so anyway, thank you guys. And uh, that's it for me. <laughs>